Poco M5S. It's the latest coming from the famous for its affordable devices, Xiaomi sub-brand. Having its major focus on great camera performance on a budget, we need to find out whether this Poco has some more tricks up its sleeves. Let's inspect! Hi! Really nice to meet you here. My name is Michael. What we do on the channel is to inspect fresh and cool tech. That's the new Poco M5S, this beautiful white color and overall very lightweight and nice on the touch smartphone. Actually, this thing on the back reminds me a lot of the OnePlus One, the silky white edition or whatever it used to be called. So, according to Poco, this smartphone is all about good camera performance on a budget. And I have the chance to use it for quite a long time because it's a very busy period for uh, us tech reviewers. Therefore, it took a while until this video is out. And I have the chance to use a lot of the functions. There have been a number of surprises, some of them good or bad. We'll find this out. Let's get started. The price is also quite attractive, especially keeping in mind that all sorts of electronic devices are getting a lot more expensive in 2022. Poco charged for it as for rather entry-level mid-ranger, which probably releases some pressure and you wouldn't have as high expectations as you would from other devices like Galaxy A53 or OnePlus Nord C series and similar. This is the usual Poco style it arrives in, the regular color of a Poco phone box with quite slim design. Luckily, the European edition does come with a power adapter. Honestly, looking at the M5S design, I think we cannot deny the similarity to my favorite Redmi Note 10 Pro. I overall have the feeling I'm holding a Redmi phone in my hands, which is backed by the fact that the specs of Poco M5s are identical to the released in India Redmi Note 10s from 2021. You probably know that both Poco and Redmi belong to Xiaomi, so it's no surprise to leverage some of the already available know-how, or all of it. Save some money, but looks like not enough money to ship a charger for all regions. Now, a quick look-up in the details shows promising specifications, a decent AMOLED display, the phone is powered by Helio G95, has 64 megapixel main camera, an ultra wide camera, and a decent 13 megapixel front shooter, 5000 mAh battery supporting quick charging, NFC, infrared blaster, dual speaker setup, expandable storage, IP53 waterproof rating, and weight of around 180 grams. Just based on the spec so far, there's nothing too impressive about the Poco M5s, but when you think of the price, things start to make really good sense. For instance, if we take the display, looks fantastic, very bright, vivid, peak brightness is 1100 nits, which is very close to the flagship characteristics, but refresh rate is cropped at 60 Hz, which is not really great for playing games. Other components are also fairly interesting. We have a 64 megapixel camera, no optical image stabilization, so we can hope that the electronic image stabilization is going to be good enough. We're going to test this in a moment. Uh, in uh, terms of CPU inside, we count on the Helio G95. It's a two-year-old system on a chip. In terms of CPU performance, it's on par with this year's Helio G99. In terms of video performance, this body here is better. But I'll bring you now back to the camera performance, because that's really the essence of today's review. I had to, of course, make a lot of photos in order to find out whether the slogan the fun magician is well deserved. Honestly, there's not much of magic involved. A fairly old and rather popular Samsung image sensor inside with f by 108 aperture. It can be fantastic with daytime photos, crisp, full of details, nice colors. I like the camera so far really a lot. If we take some of the light away, the quality gets a bit worse and some of the weaknesses start to show up. But with the dedicated night mode, it's so good. Most of my attempts to capture nice photos worked well regardless of the lighting conditions. So I must admit, the camera is on the good end. Furthermore, it supports video recording at 4K, 30 frames per second, which comes, however, without electronic image stabilization. It is available for the 1080p edition, though. I think Poco have done a decent job with this camera, enabling most of the features that a lot more expensive phones this year would offer with exception for optical image stabilization and EIS in 4K. The stack on the back has also an ultra-wide camera. I would recommend counting on this one only during the bright part of the day, because it requires really a lot of light to make good photos, and even just cloudy weather is going to add noise or grain. 
The other two cameras are not that useful. The macro camera, which being just 2 megapixels, I would gladly avoid. And the 2 megapixel depth sensor. It helps with portraits, which, well, not even close to high end phones, but pretty decent for this $200 price tag. Good to mention that the camera app here is quite rich on nice and creative functions. I can't say this is the best $220 camera phone, but it is definitely among the contenders for being such one from those released in 2022. The whole thing around the good performance of photo processing is partially thanks to the system on a chip. It's the Helio G95 and it's a two-year-old system on a chip. I guess this explains why there is no 5G connectivity. But in terms of pure performance, here's the funny part. Poco have released the M5 together with this body and it's advertised as the gaming smartphone. While the performance of G95 here is better than the performance of the G99 inside the Poco M5. And this body here is being advertised about being better in terms of camera performance. Go figure. So, games here, indeed, run even smoother than it is on the Poco M5 and many other 2022 phones. I'm quite a fan of most MediaTek SoCs from the last few years. This one just strengthens the opinion that Snapdragons by Qualcomm are no longer the champions about gaming and seem to have a lot of catching up to do when it comes to hit disposal and overall performance rate, especially for the mid-range products. Some reviewers would use the term battery smooth. I haven't used such a smartphone since the OnePlus 7, but snappiness is there and the UI reacts quicker than most competitors. Responsiveness is better even than what nothing phone one can offer right now. So in that regard, Poco M5s is no worse than most 2022 high-end mid-rangers with some very important remarks though. There's a very old Bluetooth protocol standard, so it may drain your headset battery a bit quicker because Bluetooth 5.2 and 5.3 are not supported. There is no Wi-Fi 6, no 5G capability either, but there is so much processing power that if you like to play games or run heavy apps, everything I just said wouldn't really matter. Real Racing 3 is a delight to play on this large AMOLED display, which sadly has refresh rate only up to 60Hz. If you want to try more intensive games like Call of Duty with maximum graphic details, it runs as if I play the game on my Xiaomi 12 Pro. I was quite surprised to see this particular model of processor here, but Poco seemed to have very well analyzed the situation and brought the maximum possible experience at the best value price. If you wonder about the software side, it's running Android, certified by Google, so you count on the whole Google Play Services pack and there will be frequent updates and security patches. Poco promised at least two major Android version updates, so at the current stage you're going to get support up until Android 14 as a major release. At the time I'm recording all that, it's just Android 12 with the custom MIUI 13 skin. It adds a lot of nice features, such as themes, many wallpapers, user interface customizations, shortcuts, very interesting take on the quick access panel and a fair amount of bloatware, unfortunately. On the other hand, you can free the phone from most of these unwanted apps quite easily and I strongly recommend doing so right after the first time setup. Alternatively, there's the popular MIUI the Bloater app, but it may need some better understanding of Android debugging, which not everybody would feel comfortable with. With most of these unnecessary apps out of our way, the battery is quite decent, especially if you don't push the display brightness to the limit. I quite enjoyed the battery backup and the standby times, which also have been very solid. The 33 watt quick charging is also a nice to have, with the phone getting a full recharge for a little more than an hour. Also, make sure to try some of the cool functions like the remote app or the photo editor. I'm still quite amazed by the AI capabilities of some of the features and they will for sure help you to step up your photography skills. The dark side of this phone, I've mentioned about the bloatware, no 5G support, no Wi-Fi 6, outdated Bluetooth module, no wireless charging and just entry-level IP rating. In the end of the day, mixed feelings, because that's almost cheating. Like uh, Poco have taken something that is well working, it's already there, the Redmi Note 10s, and made its global debut in the form of Poco M5s. 
Yes, it's a good smartphone, actually probably the best that you can buy right now for around $220, given the good camera performance, given the snappy user interface and everything else, but it does have some shortcomings, especially this part around zero <laughs> hardware development about it. The thing I really hope for is that Poco are not going to mess the updates up and it's gonna stay as snappy as it is at the moment. It would be interesting to hear from you. How do you feel about this whole thing? Getting a ready device and releasing it globally with a different name? And uh, would you buy the Poco M5S? Let me know. Comment down below in case of questions. You can reach out to me as well. And it was really fun to host this episode for you. I hope it was useful. I really would love to meet you in our next video. So take some good care, enjoy the day, see you soon, bye.